do you have a time machine huh? can i take you back to my school days <laughs> and get you to meet my teachers yes. bill gates is buying sweden <laughs> nobody told me <laughs> Sweden, take me in before he buys it. <laughs> ah, how do you know? I mean, that Satish, this that this guy is listening. Huh? 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 So, Shrikant, throughout hmm. our lives, huh? we are told that copying is a bad thing. Imitation is mm, like you know a low status thing. My ears remember it really well. Yeah, but I think that advice is really bad, right? Copying and imitation are the most important skills for anybody. In fact, I would argue. that copying and imitation are the secret of success of all humans do you have a time machine huh? can i take you back to my school days <laughs> and get you to meet my teachers yes. every episode you are going to ask me right please can i go back to school with this information that's why we do the show yes yes and uh, i by the way before for the literary cons out there <laughs> before we begin the rest of this episode i did manage to get the 12 digits If you don't know what I'm talking about, check out the episode on improving your memory through junking. Okay. Ah, okay. So, um, uh, in fact, uh, the secret of our success is the name of a book mm-hmm. which we'll be referencing through the episode. Okay. Also, this episode will finally explain to you why we listen to Virat Kohli on which insurance to buy, right? Because he does the dance. Yes. So, you know. copying and imitation is a secret to our success right yeah so, a lot of yeah yeah so um and when i say our i mean all humans uh, what do you, what does that even mean right yeah what there is research okay which uh, was done in say we took human toddlers mm-hmm. and compared them to chimpanzees and orangutans okay okay and all three were given similar tasks hmm. and uh, they checked the performance right so, so total as one yeah and um, not necessarily right so uh, there were four different things okay one is quantities okay right another is causality which means you know what causes what mm. right thinking of that mm. a third is spatial reasoning mm. hmm? space yeah. spatial not special not special spatial, spatial reasoning right. about okay. regarding space fourth was social learning learning from others okay, okay. on the first three spatial reasoning quantities and causality hmm. they were roughly similar to each other so chimps and orangutans were similar to human toddlers okay, okay. in social learning learning from others huh. it was not even close right we were like eight or nine times better the toddlers were okay yeah. it so, it worries me that the first three were close to chimpanzees and chimpanzees yeah. chimpan chip i'll get this chimpanzees and orangutans yes. you i'll get it yeah so the point is that we have always been told hmm. that humans hmm. are so much better than apes and we took over the world because we are so much more intelligent uh, right big brains it's not true we are not that much more intelligent right small brains our big brain hmm. the most important function is that we can learn from other humans right and that is why copying and imitation is so important right uh-huh. that is the secret to our success i mean you are from the creative field shrikant right i yes. copy a lot of people yes in fact so every true. creative person is taught at the beginning of their career that you know don't try to be original right away first copy the masters copy the greats in fact copy multiple of them and then only after you have mastered that then you start developing your own style does that sound familiar why do you think i'm sitting here navin why do you yes. think who do you think i'm trying to copy here navin <laughs> who do you think so uh, you know and i mean that there are uh, there's a funny way of saying it he which is it's really flushed when he gets flattered and embarrassed when <laughs> flattered i love watching it go on okay. so uh, <laughs> uh a funny way of saying it ha huh. is that to steal ideas from one person is plagiarism ha huh. to steal ideas from many people is research <laughs> right <laughs> so uh, but it's true right that is true it is true it is true i mean i i remember reading a book uh, by uh, this author called austin cleon the book yeah. was called steal like an artist it's a it's a yeah. great book it's a great book you should probably check it out when you guys yeah 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 to steal from me is research <laughs> so um 
I mean, another thing that you keep hearing about, right? All these like management gurus uh, will talk about the most important thing in a company is the culture, Haan. right? If you go to your grandmother, your grandmother will also be like, oh, our culture, our culture is so important for us, right? Yes. What is culture? Culture is just copying from dead people, right? <laughs> So, <laughs> the way you're putting things, it, may, it sounds funny and, uh, you know, enlightening at the same time. And it's, I, it's a little worrying right now. <laughs> Why? I, no, 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 let me put it, the same thing, right? Basically, tradition and culture are peer pressure from dead people, <laughs> right? But <laughs> a different way of saying it. Is that when you put the word peer and dead in the same sentence, it means something very different. But go on, I yeah. get what you're trying so, to say. So, the point is that a different way of saying it is that traditions hmm. are things somebody tried, they worked out well, hmm. right? And now they are telling you, copy me. Yes. That's what tradition is. And yes. all the traditions, all the things that you are supposed to do or you do without even thinking about, hmm. right? Is your culture. Because those are the things you copy from your parents and your friends and your uncles and they copied from their parents and friends and uncles and so on, right? Wow. I mean, and 90% of our learning, 90% of our behavior is copying of this type. You have just opened a can of worms that I am not even sure where to begin. I mean, mm. I understand uh, the concept of culture being uh, tried and tested things over the years. Yeah. But then again, a lot of those things keep getting tried again and again. And there are different results sometimes. Yeah. So, no, no, so see, huh. I'm not saying huh. that you never change anything. Huh. Right? All I'm simply saying is that modern world... Hmm puts way too much emphasis on originality and creativity and let's do it differently and yeah. do it in a new way uh, and so on, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm saying, yes, I mean, you do need all of those things, hmm. but, you know, in a small amount. I mean, 90% imitation and 10% originality. That's what you should be doing. I mean, too much, too many times people just change things because they want to change things. People do new things because new things are like supposed to be good. There is a concept called Chesterton's fence. Huh. Chesterton is G.K. Chesterton, the great uh, English author. Yeah. And he says that if you see a fence in the road, huh. right? And then one of these modern guys is going to say, oh, this fence, I've never used this fence. I don't know anybody uses this fence. Let's get rid of it. Yeah. That's the wrong way of looking at it, right? Do not get rid of the fence until you find out why it was there in the first place. Okay, and, and that's the fence, that here, fence. The fence here is a metaphor for the basically. tradition, the copying that you were doing. I mean, you're. I mean, don't say I'm not going to copy. Yeah, I mean, find out why those things are there in the first place and take the ones that make sense. Discard the ones that don't. Like I'm not saying that Satish, we should keep copying that. Hmm. Okay, <laughs> it's best discarded. So, uh, what is this Satish? Satish, no Sati. Sati, achha, sorry. I heard Satish and I'm wondering who Satish is and why we should not copy him. Don't copy Satish either. Satish is an idiot, okay? <laughs> to all the Satishes out there, terribly sorry. We don't mean you. We mean the other Satish. Uh, how do you know? I mean that Satish. This, that, this guy was listening. Yeah. Okay, we mean you. Okay. No, but uh, I, I do agree with you in, in, yeah. in a lot of things. Because uh, one of the first things that we learn as uh, people in the creative industry is that we have to unlearn this not copying um, dogma that is passed down to us in school. Hmm. That copying is essentially a great way to improve yourself. In fact, I remember uh, during the Renaissance, the masters would make their students copy their paintings hmm. millimeter by millimeter and until they got that right, the students weren't allowed to uh, start off new paintings of their own because that's that's basically how they were taught all yeah. of the basic techniques of painting, the brush strokes, hmm. the colors and all of that, yeah. right? Yeah. And I mean, you might argue hmm. that, okay, that's fine in like regular life. But if you want to succeed in business or you want to do a startup, then you have to be original. Hmm. I don't know. Okay, no, let's but, take the example huh. of Microsoft. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Nothing they have ever done is original. Okay. <laughs> Microsoft Word wasn't the first word processor. 
True. Okay, Word Perfect was much before that. Microsoft PowerPoint wasn't the first presentation software, right? There were many before that. Microsoft Excel isn't the first spreadsheet, right? Lot uh, Lotus One Two Three was way before that. Right. Skip, yeah, but, before right, that, right? Yeah. What Microsoft did was they copied good stuff that they saw around them, right? And added ten percent originality, right? And that's why Bill Gates can buy Sweden. And you cannot, even though you are original. Bill Gates is buying Sweden. <laughs> Nobody told me. <laughs> Sweden, take me before he buys it. So the point is that even in business, huh. most of business is actually copying. Only there has to be just you know some amount of originality, but not everything. But then there are there are uh, uh, there are occasional moments where something entirely new comes into being. Like for example, when the iPhone first launched, yeah, uh, it was it was. Okay, let's just take, let's take the example of Apple, right? Hmm. Forget iPhone, just go all the way back to Apple. Uh, Think first different, computers, yeah. First computers, right? And I mean, especially compared to Microsoft, we see Apple as a very creative, as a renegade brand, brand, as like but this actually, creative. If you go and look at Apple, what all Apple introduced, right? Yeah. Most of that is copied from Xerox Park, right? There is something called the mother of all demos uh, in the 1960s. If you look at that. Just Steve Jobs just took those, put them in Apple, and just productized them much better. Okay. <laughs> we'll put a link to the mother of all demos in the show notes, yeah. the description. Yes. Check it out. Yeah. He's right. I when he said that, it suddenly struck yeah. me that yeah, it wasn't innovation. Yeah, he was just I mean, there thinking is something... different. I mean, no, no, I'm not saying Apple is not innovative. Apple yeah, is yeah. very innovative. What I'm saying is that it's not all innovation. It's not 100%. It's that yeah. 90% plus 10% yeah. that we, that Naveen spoke yeah. about a little earlier. Yeah. So, uh, what what I hear you saying is innovation for the sake of innovation and modernization never yeah. really works out. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, uh, there is two ways of looking at it, right? One is that just in things like business and so on, mm. don't completely discount what has already always been working hmm. but even regularly in our lives we have a tendency to just you know anything new and modern and it's a fashion hmm. is uh, we want to pick up right hmm. and that's not necessarily always a, a good idea hmm. uh, there is another concept called uh, the lindy principle okay which basically says hmm. that if an idea has been around for a long time it will continue to be around for a long time if it has been around for a short time there's a good chance it will disappear after a short time, right? As in, how long an idea or a concept or a tradition hmm. will survive in the future is roughly proportional to how long it has survived so far, right? So something that has been around for 5,000 years hmm. will probably be around for another 5,000 years. Whereas something that started three years ago might not be there three years from now. Okay, so that brings up the question, when do you go with... Which of them? As in, when do I take something new that has come out and when do I choose to stay with what has already been tried and tested? Yeah. So, um, I mean, there isn't an easy answer. Okay. okay? Uh, in fact, uh, I'm going to answer by saying, you know, referencing one more episode. We will do an episode on something called uh, Pace Layers. Okay? okay. It's a complex concept, but I want to really do that episode. Hold on, that's Pace Layers? Yeah. Or pay slayers. No. <laughs> slayers. Basically, the idea is that there are different layers to anything in life. The outermost uh -huh. layer is fashion, uh -huh. which moves very fast. And uh -huh. the innermost like layer that. is culture and tradition, which is like very slow to change. Heavy enough. And we need both of them. And uh, we're going to talk about, you know, what things should be in the outer fast changing layer and what things should be in the... Okay, okay. so how does this space layer uh, correlate to the question that I was... Uh... So, what it does hmm. is that it tells you that what things should be in the outermost layer where you are, you know, picking up new things and trying out new things at the same time, always, huh. right? The outermost layer, the latest new fashionable things, huh. right? those uh, keep us fresh and prevent us from getting, you know, stuck. Huh. Huh? in bad situations and old ways and stuck in a rut mm. but the innermost layers give us stability mm. right and uh, you have to be careful about those so we'll talk about that all right we basically the point of this episode mm. 
is that don't go just for the outermost layer of everything new, everything, uh, right? There is important thing uh, in, uh, in copying what works. This, this, the, the only thing that I'm worried about is that this sounds perilously close to uh, what, uh, what people say, but it has been working for thousands of years. How can you suddenly decide it is not working one of these days? And you know hmm. what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, so yeah, ha, uh, no, we have to, it has to be a combination, it, but I did promise ha. that I will explain what this has to do with Virat Kohli oh, yes. digit dance, right? So. I said that the secret to our success uh, is that we copy from other humans. Right? Correct. What I didn't say is how do you choose what to copy and from which humans, right? Again, evolution has given us an easy answer that what we want to do is we want to copy from successful people. The ones copying from losers are going to become losers, right? Whereas the ones copying from successful people have a higher chance of succeeding. Make sense? Yeah. And success. I mean, how do you decide who's successful? Of course, that just comes from visibility. That explains celebrities. Yes. The third part, and this is the important part, is what traits or habits of successful people should you copy? Seven of them. No. The point <laughs> is that life is complicated, right? You don't know which of Virat Kohli's behaviors ultimately contributed to his success. Right? You copy all of them. So you copy everything. <laughs> so then if Virat Kohli does the digit dance, you also are going to do the digit dance, right? This is, I mean, I know that your system 2 brain is saying this is stupid. Okay. But system 2 brain is not in charge. System 1 brain has already decided we are going to do the digit dance. And later on, system 1 brain is going to come up with a very convincing and logical reason why that particular insurance company is a good company, right? This explains a lot of uh, fans and fanatics. <laughs> Suddenly, yeah. it all became clear why there are so many fans and fanatics. Not knocking the fans out there, uh, but I think you now understand why you are it fans. Huh? 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 <laughs> and probably, I mean, your system one, uh, system two is strong enough to not get influenced by Virat Kohli on insurance right <laughs> but i can bet you there is something else where you are making the same mistake so, uh, yeah all Look, of us the dance made same. me go out and check uh, uh, the insurance provider not affiliated with them they are not paying us for this video there is absolutely <laughs> no money being exchanged although we would love it if there is so if anybody from digit is watching feel free to contact us we will take a bucket load of money from you and, and do the <laughs> 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 okay, so that explains why a lot of people do the dance or whatever else uh, uh, copying comes into mind, copying and imitation comes into mind. But uh, that also gives you a great idea about how to progress because uh, the seven habits that I mentioned was actually a book, the seven habits of highly effective people. And the book was written with this intent in mind that these are the seven habits of highly effective people and you should probably look to copy them, imitate them. So, okay, in fact, I will put it a little differently. Okay. Right? Uh, not only is uh, imitation necessary, uh -huh. but also hmm. it is unavoidable. Okay. Okay. Uh, in fact, everything you even want in life, everything you desire in life hmm. uh, comes from, uh, you know, what you see around you. Uh, it's a theory called uh, mimetic desire by a philosopher called Girard, which we will talk about in another episode. Another episode. Again, if we've already done this episode by the time you're watching this or hearing this, then you'll find the link to the episode in the show notes and description. You know, explains a lot of things uh, where you think, oh, I want this because XYZ, but in reality, it is because you saw someone else doing it. Okay. So, but I'm sure a lot of students out there are going to take this video straight to their teachers and say, look, Naveen says we should copy what yeah. you're going to tell. Right. So <laughs> you have to understand where uh, this makes sense, right? Ha. So one is that, uh, of course, copy only legally. There yeah. are some kinds of copies which are illegal. Do not goes without saying that we are not, we don't, we don't condone yeah. that at all. Second is that that some amount of innovation which is there on top of the copying that is also necessary otherwise you will not succeed mm -hmm. but 
specifically for students right if you are going to copy mindlessly mm. you know there is a question and somebody else answered it and you just copy the answer without even uh, it going to your brain then you are not learning anything right yeah. i mean if you are going to copy uh, the, see the example you gave mm. of the great masters mm. who made their students copy the painting exactly i mean they had to do the actual painting so they learned techniques while doing it right correct correct if you copy in a way where you are learning those things internalizing those things that sort of copying is okay mm. but if you are doing a copy in a way where you know it is just happening mechanically and you are not learning anything then that is bad mm. i mean even if you get a mr miyagi you still have to paint the fence correct the copying i mean another reason for uh, you know copying if it is resulting in practice mm. right that uh, is good because you know we have another episode where we talked about what practice does for you what repetition does for you okay so when is it ideal to not copy then because now what you've said so far seems like everything that you see interesting should be copied and assimilated into your so system see, the context is always important hmm. right uh, the world keeps changing hmm. i mean again i would go back to 90 10 of the world remains same 10% changes but that 10% can make all the difference so when you are copying something you try to understand what is the context in which that happened hmm. what is the new context is it still does it still make sense or not hmm. right hmm. Hmm. and hmm. only copy those things which still make sense in the new context right like vastu shastra i mean 5000 years ago people were living in gangetic plains rivers coming in one direction wind coming in another direction and there was no indoor plumbing right things that makes sense at that time might not make sense today where we are living in the plateau yeah. and there is plumbing and uh, so on right but something still makes sense the sun still rises in the east uh, right so some things make sense some things don't you have to know which ones to keep and which ones to throw away essentially like all shastras like all science the vastu shastra has also gotten updated because there are certain new practices and principles that have come in and that updating needs to get done so yes. yeah don't yes. copy mindlessly like exactly. we said hmm. mindless copying does not make sense but copying and imitation are not just the greatest form of flattery they also seem to be the greatest form of educating yourself and that and the secret to our success that's the secret to his success and pretty soon yeah. my success yeah so i mean just to mention uh, this is a very deep topic we just covered a little bit of it mm. uh, there is an entire book called the secret to our success which gives the uh, cognitive evolutionary background to this mm -hmm. a different book called copycats by oded shankar mm. uh, says how smart companies use imitation to gain a strategic edge and there are a bunch of uh, articles uh, so just check out the links managers But, and leaders out there go on to your amazon accounts and order we are not affiliated with amazon although again we'd love to be affiliated <laughs> shrikant naveen thank you this is future iq